Speaking of Minnesota, a doctor and state senator from Minnesota, Scott Jensen, joins us tonight on the 702 communication line to talk about an interesting piece you put in the Star Tribune recently as well. So I don't know if you like Dr. Jensen, Senator Jensen, but thank you so much for joining us tonight, sir. And let's start with this. Um, you and I communicated briefly yesterday via email, shortly on the phone. Have you yet seen the information that's going into these U of M models that the governor is using to make these decisions? No, we have not. Uh, we have asked for those, and we were told by the governor's office that we would receive the data tonight. Uh, and so we're hoping to see what the assumptions are and what the data is. Uh, but at this point in time, we have not. So I just want to be clear for our audience, sir. You've got a governor of a state that is making executive orders, stay-at-home orders that right now is cratering your economy. Uh, we don't know what data is being used, and yet you as a state senator, as a doctor, have not seen that data that's being used for our governor to make these decisions. No, we have not. And um, Does that, does that not concern you? I mean, shouldn't the people of Minnesota be screaming right now? Well, I think, you know, Minnesota nice. We want to, we want to be good soldiers and that, but I, I think that people are starting to say, hold it now. We need to have a deeper understanding of this, and we're not getting it. I think that, well, in Minnesota, as a physician, I received an email last week from the Department of Health coaching me on how to fill out death certificates. And I've never really received coaching from the vital statistics uh, agency in terms of how to do a death certificate. But basically, I felt like they were saying, you know, you don't have to have a confirmed laboratory test for COVID-19 in order to make the death certificate be COVID-19. So wait, 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 wait. Uh, sir, 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 I don't mean to interrupt you, but that and what you just said, I think is critically important. Can you repeat what you just said, please? Well, last Friday, I received a seven page document that sort of told me that if I had an 86 year old patient that had pneumonia, but was never tested for COVID-19, but sometime after she came down with pneumonia, we learned that she had been exposed to her son who had no symptoms, but later on was identified with COVID-19, that it would be appropriate to diagnose on the death certificate COVID-19. Now we've not done that. If someone has the pneumonia after, and, and it's in the middle of a flu epidemic, and I don't have a test on influenza, I don't diagnose influenza on the death certificate. I will say uh, this elderly patient Sir, died of pneumonia. I, I don't mean to interrupt you, but I, I, my heart is sinking right now as you're telling me this. You're, you're a doctor. Why in the world would they be sending you out information to fill out death certificates, whether the person's been diagnosed with COVID-19 or not, but then to say in the death certificate, this person's death was caused by COVID-19? That, that does not sound right to me. I went to the person in our office who does most of the death certificates over the last you know, 10, 20 years, and I said, does this sound right? I had her look at the documents that I printed it off, and she said, well, we've always been told that you always put down just facts. You don't put down any probabilities. You don't put any presumptions down. It's just what you know. And so this is concerning. And, and it actually gets to your point, Chris. When we start talking about the data that goes into the modeling, we have to ask ourselves a question. Are we being forthright? Are we sharing with the public? Minnesota, North Dakota, we don't need to be having it sugar-coated. We want to know... But what's going into your modeling? So with that being said, why would they want to skew the number of deaths due to COVID-19? Well, fear is a great way to control people. And I worry about that. I worry that sometimes we're so darn interested in just jazzing up the fear factor that, you know, sometimes people's ability to think for themselves is paralyzed if they're frightened enough. And that's not where I want people to be. I want people to say, we're going to get through this. I'm going to use my head. I'm going to go to different sources. I'm going to listen to different sources. And I'm going to think for myself because that's what America is about. Um, Senator, if you don't mind, after this interview, if, if you can send me that seven-page document. And, and just for clarity, you were sent a seven-page document by who again? The Department of Health. Department of Health saying, hey, fill this out, whether they test positive for COVID. That, that is stunning, sir. So uh, Governor Wallace had his conference call today. One of the things he mentioned is he's, he's going to lay out, it sounds like, some ideas or a plan tomorrow about his statewide stay-at-home order it was supposed to end on April 10th. He is going to have some changes to that. Do you have any new information regarding that, sir? 
I don't, but there's certainly been a big push that we should be using more of a laser focused approach rather than some sort of a broad scale whack-a-mole kind of a thing. We've got landscapers and lawn preparers and we've got dock workers and golf courses. And there's no reason to not let those people out there doing their job. And it isn't just about those occupations I mentioned. We're also talking about a tremendously revved up allergy season if we don't do these things. If we just let the weeds and the spring pollens go crazy, we're going to have a lot of kids with hay fever and asthma. And we know that the supply chain of asthmatic inhalers is potentially at risk. So we have to be very thoughtful when we do these things. Doc, I got two more things for you, sir. Since you are a doctor, I think the people at home, because you just mentioned the fear factor, um, there's a lot of trepidation. There's so much uncertainty right now. As a doctor, as a state senator, and you look out to the horizon, there's a lot of varying information about when you guys are gonna go, sort of get on the other side of this. I'm not asking you to make a certain prediction, but what's your best guess? Well, I think it's gonna be the end of April, but I think when we get there, I think it's gonna be manageable. Our hospitals have done a wonderful job of preparing for it. And the fact of the matter is, <laughs> we're not gonna win this battle by kicking the can down the road. At some level, we're gonna win this battle by having enough people become immune to it, by getting the disease. And it's a mild disease in 90% of the people. So the idea of minimizing this wave of the pandemic so that the next wave in, in the fall of the year uh, will be greater, that doesn't necessarily make a ton of sense either. Yeah, Doc, last question. I got about 60 seconds, sir. I mean, we'd love to have you back, but I actually, actually originally brought you on because I thought you had a fascinating piece in the Star Tribune. If we can bring this up, Christy, but it says, hey, more thoughtful lockdown rules could spare loss and suffering. It was really geared towards, look, guys, we've got to obviously put public health first, but also be concerned about our economy. 30 seconds, sir. Why should people go read this piece? Well, I think what it does is it says, listen, we're not going to have government make arbitrary decisions about what is an essential and a non-essential business. We're talking about measuring what we're trying to do. We're trying to provide some, some separation. We're trying to provide some social distancing. And if that's the case, we need to look at what's a safe occupation and what's not. So if two people are mowing a lawn on a golf course and they're 30 yards apart, that's not an issue. If we've got lawn people and they're working in solo or, or two-man crews, this is not an issue. When government goes overboard, we lose our liberties and we may never get them back. So we need to be very careful. We can do it with a more laser precision rather than just whack-a-mole. Doctor and Minnesota State Senator Scott Jensen, thank you so much for the time. And boy, I think you made some major breaking news today, sir. And if you would again, please email me that document, okay? We'll do that. Thank you very much.